do live streams today. I'm so excited because it's Tuesday and we have two cooking demos. Thank you so much for all the wonderful emails you're sending us that you're really enjoying what started out just as a way to create community and connection during the sheltering that people are actually enjoying it now and want it to continue. It will continue, but starting next week, it'll only continue to the tune of one broadcast a week. So I hope you're not too disappointed, but we've got a lot of great guests scheduled for several months ahead of time because so many people are, uh, are so blessed that they want to do this. And we're going to be getting a lot more of the cooking demos because I know that uh, especially those of you that are home, whether it's because of sheltering or because you stay home and you want recipes. So good morning, Deborah and Jane. Good to see you here. So today we have one of my very favorite chefs, one of my favorite SOF SOS free chefs and one of my two favorite Kathy's and she's going to be making two recipes from her wonderful book which is called Straight Up Food. She has a blog by the same name and today she's going to be making her famous carrot cake. Kathy cooks carrot cake today so it's going to be amazing and delicious. She's also going to be making a cabbage slaw or a cabbage salad with a, uh, a mustard lime dressing that's also in the book, but I'm not showing a picture because I don't have a picture for that one. So if you're not familiar with Kathy Fisher, she's the creator of straightupfood.com. It's a website that offers free recipes and information on eating a whole food plant-based diet that's free of salt, oil, sugar, and gluten. Sounds like she eats like me, huh? She's also a cooking instructor at both the True North Health Center and the McDougal program, which are both located in Santa Rosa. And she began eating a plant-based diet in 1999 and in 2016 published her long-awaited first cookbook straight up food delicious and easy plant-based cooking without salt oil and sugar please welcome to her kitchen my friend kathy fisher thanks for coming on today kathy hi thank you so much for having me well you're one of my favorites you know that so i'm excited to get to uh, watch you cook today yes well i'm gonna make two recipes as you said and if you have any questions, AJ, or anybody sends any questions, just wave at me and I will answer those. And also if I'm not loud enough, just let me know. I'm using my iPhone today. Um, so I hope y'all can hear me. Absolutely, and, and uh, Jan sent in a few questions, so we'll ask those, but let's get the recipe okay. started and then we'll get to the questions. Sounds good. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna start with the salad because we should do dessert last. So we'll do the salad, then we'll do the carrot cake. And this is a cabbage salad with mustard lime dressing. And that doesn't sound very exciting. Maybe I should have named it something different, but whenever I make this in demos, people go nutty for it. And here's all the ingredients in front of me. Um, it's just bright and beautiful and whole foods and super easy. And I specifically wanted to make this one today because I know you have a lot of followers that don't do added fat, any added fat, no nuts or seeds or anything like that. So the dressing is also really, it's no added fat. So I have everything already chopped in front of me. So it's gonna come together pretty quickly. And here's the bowl I'm gonna use to put it all together. So the first things we're gonna put in are the cabbage. This is four cups of thinly sliced cabbage and two cups of grated carrots. Now for a dish like this, I like to peel my carrots. Sometimes I don't peel the carrots, I just wash them. But when they're gonna show up so much in a salad like this, um, I do like to peel them so they look nice and bright. So I'm gonna- Kathy, there is a question from mm -hmm. Susanna, how do you grate your cabbage? And just so you know, Aunt Sandy is watching, so I'm telling her to share this broadcast and everyone else as well. Aunt Sandy. Hi, Aunt Sandy. Uh, yeah, a lot of people are probably watching that know me today. This is so exciting. Um, how do I grate my cabbage? I don't really grate the cabbage like I grate the carrots. I just cut a portion of the cabbage up and put it on the cutting board. And just with my, where is it? My chef's knife, I just slice very thinly. So that's what I do. You could also do like confetti style that you've seen sometimes in coleslaw that's cut into little tiny squares. You could do that as well. Or you could use a food processor with the um, cutting blade. Is that what it's called? The uh, chopping? The shredding blade. Yes. And just put it through there if you want. 
but I just use my chef knife because I don't want to wash the food processor. Yeah. So that is what I usually do. Yeah, Sabrina watching live says she uses a mandolin and lazy chef AJ buys it already shredded. Yes, I've done that as well. So whatever you like, there are many ways to do things in cooking. So do the way that makes you happy. All right. The so way that makes me happy, Kathy, is having somebody else do it. <laughs> If you were here, I'd love to cook for you. My two cats don't really appreciate my cooking. So I've just been cooking for myself for months and I really, really miss it. I miss being a true North and McDougal and cooking for people. So this is so fun. Um, okay, so I have the carrots and the cabbage in there. And also if you wanted to put a little red cabbage in there too, just for prettiness, you could do that as well. All right, I'm probably going out of order of the recipe. Um, this is one can of garbanzo beans, drained and rinsed. I always get the question, do I need to drain and rinse them? It depends what you're doing. If you're putting it, if you're putting a can of beans into a stew or a soup, you don't necessarily have to rinse them. I always do. But if you're putting them into a salad like this, you definitely want them on the, the drier side. You don't want them wet and sticky. So. You can use a can of salt-free garbanzo beans. You can make your own garbanzo beans at home, cook them up. I'm using this um, little box of organic no salt added 365 brand from Whole Foods. And I'm really into substitutions and options if you feel like doing that. If you didn't have garbanzo beans and you only had kidney beans, do you think that would still taste good? Yeah, that would still taste really good. Black beans, pinna beans. So you can experiment with the beans. You don't have to use garbanzo, but that's what I'm using today. This is a very colorful salad. So I have some cucumber here, peeled and sliced. I have a little green onion here, chopped, some celery and some bell pepper. I had those tiny little sweet peppers so that's why it kind of looks like this. Um, so I used a couple red ones and a couple orange ones as well. So I'm gonna add these to my bowl and this salad will grow. I have my cats locked out of the kitchen and I can hear them trying to push their way in. <laughs> this is really unusual activity at home. All right. All right, I also have about a quarter cup of chopped fresh basil here. Again, if you only had fresh parsley or cilantro or something like that, you could use that instead. And then last, and this is optional, is uh, some diced avocado. So I've already cut this one in the skin, so it's already in little squares. And I'm just gonna use my spoon to scoop it out. You could use no avocado. You could use a whole avocado like I'm doing. You could use a half. You could add it as you're eating the salad each day. It's up to you. Okay. All right, so that's all the salad stuff in this bowl. I'm just gonna set this aside and we're gonna make the dressing pretty quickly. I am going to use my little try best personal blender. I have a big blender, which I'll use a little later with the cake, uh, but this is my little try best. I love it. It's great for when you just want to do a little bit of something. The blade is right on the end. So, and it comes with bigger cups as well, but I use this to make salad dressing mostly, to grind flax seeds. It's a great little tool. So this dressing only has three ingredients. I love that. First ingredient is a half cup of lime juice which I've already measured out here. One clove of fresh garlic. And the last ingredient is about a quarter cup of mustard. Now there is a mustard called West Brain Natural that is a stone ground mustard that doesn't have any salt added. It's most easily found online. I usually get four at a time. Uh, it's harder to find in the stores. It's kind of hit and miss. So when you can't find that, you don't have that, uh, 
like I do today, I'm using this Whole Foods brand. Just find the one that has the lowest amount of salt, which this one does. So I'm gonna add this in. You're making Aunt Sandy hungry, and she says she loves her little blender too. Lisa Williams also loves her try best. So does Brenda, a lot of people like this. Jody says, hi, Chef AJ and Kathy. I made both of these recipes during a fun home kitchen challenge I called Straight Up September. They're both tasty. So people like that. And uh, oh, Amarta is saying edamame might be very good in the salad as well. Absolutely. You can mix and match, add what you like, keep out what you don't like. It's up to you. I think that recipes in cookbooks are the way that the person who wrote that cookbook, the chef, likes it. It doesn't mean everyone's going to like it exactly that same way. Maybe you'll get an idea that oh, I want to put some fresh fennel in there or some edamame or whatever. Go ahead and do it. Do it to it. All right, so here's our dressing. I'm just gonna blend it quickly. Kathy, the Kathy that's watching with an eye wants to know if the recipe is in the cookbook. Yes, it's on page 56 of her cookbook. And it's one of the few recipes actually, I think that doesn't have a photo. Yeah, not every single one of them has a photo. But you can see it is in the book right here cabbage salad with mustard lime dressing. So I'm guessing it's on the blog as well. Yep, yeah, it's on my recipe blog, straightupfood.com. Um, okay, so here's the dressing. It makes like about a cup. You could keep this separately and just add it as you eat, eat, eat the salad. I'm gonna just pre-dress it here. Mix it up. Ooh. You know, we eat with our eyes as well as our mouths, so it's got to look pretty. You know, if you're just home by yourself eating, maybe not so pretty. Although sometimes I make my plates nice looking just for myself, but especially if you're taking this to an event with family or friends or something, we want it to look pretty and enticing because people already think this food, people who don't eat this way, that this way of eating is boring and won't taste flavorful and good. So we we want to entice them in to try it. If it doesn't look good, there's less chance of them trying it. Now, if you wanted to add some freshly ground black pepper to this, you could. You could sprinkle some dried green herbs, which is one little trick I love doing with salads, just to add a little more flavor. Okay. So, once you get that all coated, are there different models of the try best? Some people want to know. Yes, they have all different types of packages. So uh, go to their store, check out the different packages. I have on my website store this one because I like it um, best. They do have models with glass cups. They have some with plastic cups. The plastic doesn't have BPA in it. So if that's a concern of yours, um, know that it doesn't have BPA. I've tried the, the glass ones, it's like a mason jar and they give you an adapter and I didn't like it as well. It just didn't work quite as well. So I like the, the plastic one and I forget what the model is, but it's this, it comes with this four prong blade, it comes with a two prong blade and it comes with four cups, two shorts, two talls and lids and stuff like that. You could also garnish this with some more of the basil on top or avocado. Okay. Yummy. All right, I'm running out of kitchen space here. Caroline says, straight up food is my go-to cookbook. Kathy's carrot cake cupcakes are my reason for being. That's wonderful. <laughs> my reason for being. Um, so here it is. Can you see that? Oh my God, it looks, I wish you could just, I wish the guests could just pass this through the screen because you make me so hungry. <gasps> oh, looks yeah. so good, looks so good. So somebody's asking if there's a sub for the mustard, but there's only three ingredients. And if you take out the mustard, you're basically have just lime juice. Yeah, I mean, the mustard also gives it a little bit of heft and creaminess. 
Um, if you want to leave out the mustard, you could use some cooked white beans, like some navy beans or cannellini beans, just to give it some body. Uh, you'd still have the lime and the garlic. So yeah, I know some people out there, they're just not mustard people. Um, you could just do the lime and the garlic if you want. So. Yep. Dina asks, that bowl of salad is, how long will that last for you? Um, just this bowl or the whole amount? I mean, I forget how much it makes. Uh, it makes about six, 10 cups of salad. I don't know, I, I eat a lot of food, so um, I would probably eat this up in like three meals <laughs> if it was just my, my main part of my meal. But everybody's different, you know? Some people eat little bits of salad, some people eat big heaping plates of salad, so. Yeah. People um, are asking about the West Bray mustard, so I just posted a link where they could get it on Amazon. Some stores has it, have it. I've noticed it doesn't seem to be available in most Whole Foods, but Sprouts generally tends to carry it. So oh, okay. and Chrissy is volunteering to be your sous chef, and Plant Based Genie says your blueberry muffins are delicious. Blueberry muffins, yeah. I get a lot of feedback on those muffins. Um, and I also wanted to mention that I, I, there's a bunch of things that you can add on top of food if you're a person that likes to sprinkle maybe you're trying to give up salt you want something else so sometimes I use ground sumac berries which are really good and kind of lemony salty tasting and here's a citrus pepper seasoning salt free that you can add um, there's all kinds of salt-free things. Renaissance garden, salt-free, and it just has a mix of herbs in it like red bell pepper, toasted onion, tomato powder, shallots. So if you're missing salt, there's no excuse. Go get a salt-free shake. I know you like Benson's Table Tasty. There's all kinds out there. Uh, here's an all-purpose salt-free. So. Okay. That's a very cute bag that you have with the fruit on it. Everybody comments on that bag. It's a Kaiser yeah. bag. I think it's a little bag for your pills or something. Um, That's great. A lot yeah. of nice comments. Sherry saying she loves your tuna salad. Heidi says she likes putting dulse flakes on my salad. I love the smoked dulse. Uh, Gina wants to know, might we get a second cookbook from Kathy? Her recipes are so good. Oh, good. Thank you so much. Um, all right, so I'm just going to set this aside, and if you think of questions later about this, feel free to ask, but I'm going to move on to the carrot cake. So super easy. I mean, I had all this chopping done, which helps, but easy, easy breezy. All right. But just so you know, Heather says, Kathy, your hair looks beautiful. <laughs> you know, I haven't done my hair in months, really. So I had fun today, kind of blowing it out, and thank you. All right, AJ, um, I'm gonna kind of switch gears, so just give me one sec. Yeah, I'll just talk to people for a minute. Okay. Hi guys, thanks for being here. We have another cooking demo at one with Gustavo, and we have so many cooking demos scheduled because it just seems like we get so many more people watching live when we have food. So we're doing, uh, as much as I love talking to the doctors, and I do, and I will still continue to do that, but people seem to love recipes and realize we're not gonna type the recipes in the chat box or cut and paste because you can get them for free just by heading, heading on over to Kathy's blog, which is called Straight Up Food, or you can buy the book in hardcover, you can buy a Kindle, I can't buy it in Audible, because I guess uh, they don't do that so much with cookbooks. And a Facebook user is asking, can these be watched later? Great question, calling you Facebook user, because that's what it says. You absolutely can watch these the second they're over, they are available and they stay on both my Facebook page, which is Chef AJ, which some of you are watching from, and on my YouTube page, which is also Chef AJ. So I don't think you can come in in the middle and watch the beginning, but these usually last an hour. Sometimes they go a little longer with doctors. And then of course you can watch it forever. And I appreciate it so much when you share it, especially in real time, because when I get good numbers, I get really good guests because some of them actually look for that. So um, do you, oh, I'll ask, I'll, Kathy, there's a question from Beth. 
When do you think you'll be back to True North doing cooking demos, Kathy? How about me, Chef AJ? Well, I my once a year gig was canceled and I was supposed to come there in October of last year for a week as a guest chef. And that was right during those fires. And guess what? I couldn't even get in. So who knows? Ask Dr. Goldhammer. That's what you need to do. Everybody needs to email him and says, we want Chef AJ back because that was really, really fun. Kathy <laughs> says she loves the cooking demonstrations. Me too, because there's a lot less work because when I have a, a doctor on, I got to listen to everything they've ever said, and read all their books. But with chefs, I can just have fun. So now take it away, Kathy. Yay. And I don't know when I'm going to return to True North. I'm hoping maybe in June. Um, so we'll see. I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Uh, but I will be doing live cooking videos uh, for the next two Tuesdays in May at 10 a.m. from my Facebook page. Um, AJ won't be there, but I'll be doing those on my own. So if you're not on my mailing list, go to my website, sign up for my newsletter, and I'll let you know when those are happening. But it's the next three Tuesdays at 10 o'clock Pacific time. Okay. So now we're going to make the carrot cake and the picture in the book that you showed at the beginning that showed uh, like cupcakes. You can make these as cupcakes, muffins, frosting, no frosting. You can make it as an eight by eight flat cake. You can make it as a round cake. It's very versatile. So today we're going to make it in a eight by eight pan. And I already have one made. So we have that set aside. So you'll be able to see that at the end. And Okay, so, and I like to follow my own steps because people at home might be looking at the steps so I don't wanna go out of order. So I'm just gonna glance over here. The first step is to soak the dates. Now I have some medjool dates in here. This is one way that I buy them. Um, you can buy them bulk as well. You just wanna make sure that you take the pits out they're kind of looking like this, kind of fat and squishy. They have pits in the middle, which will break your tooth if you forget to take it out. And the pit looks, it's tiny, it's like that, but it's very powerful. So if I say I'm using eight dates, I will make sure that I have eight date pits lined up on my cutting board and that it doesn't accidentally get into my blender. Even after cooking this long, I still do that because if I miss a date pit and it ends up in my blender, it's bad news because then I got to pour all the stuff out, find the pit, put it back in. But you will know the difference. Um, a pit in the blender sounds like a piece of glass. Tink, 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 tink. So be careful about that. So in here we have the dates. We have some non-dairy milk. I use this West Soy soy milk, but you can use any non-dairy milk that you like. And there's a teaspoon of vanilla in there, and there's also a quarter cup of raisins in there. So this has been soaking. This kind of takes the place of our brown sugar, you know, traditional cake wet mixture, um, eggs, um, refined sugar. So that's what this is. So this has been soaking, and I will put it in my blender here in a minute and we'll blend it all up. But before we do that, we need to make our flour. Now where I work at True North Health, um, that's what I base my recipes on. They don't do any gluten. So when I want flour, I just grind it myself out of a non-glutinous grain. This is oat flour, or rolled oats that I'm going to grind into flour. Um, I find that flours are pretty interchangeable. Um, so if you don't want to use oat flour, you can use another kind of oat flour. I've also tried, or another kind of flour. Um, I've also bought oat flour in the store, pre-ground, and it works. It's better if you grind your own though. It just tastes better. So I'm going to go ahead and, can you see the blender here? I can see there? the blender. Did you see what happened to my blender, the picture I posted where it exploded? I did. I that's, did, that's crazy. I know Blendtec hasn't gotten back to me yet. Uh, so I, I've never seen anything like that. That could have been really dangerous if there were children around. Yeah, did it pop off in one piece? It just, I mean, the trajectory, it went like 10 feet and it took so long to clean the kitchen. It was insane, you know? Oh my gosh. Yeah. All right. Oh, actually um, I bought a new Vitamix, my first brand new Vitamix 
and it's coming tomorrow. So I'm so excited to get a new Vitamix. This is a fairly old one that still works pretty well, um, but I'm excited to have my new one. Okay, so this is one and what is it? Uh, one and three quarter cups rolled oats into the blender. Now, if you've never made your own flour, it's very easy. You just put it into your blender, high speed blender like this or Blendtec, this is a Vitamix, um, works best. And we're just gonna grind it for like 10 to 20 seconds until it looks like flour. Now they also make a grain jar. This is just a regular jar, but if you have a grain jar, you can use that. This is not a grain jar and it works just fine. Here we go. They make it so that we can't hear the blender. I wonder what they're doing on their end because it's, it's not that loud. Yes, I did hear the sweet tomatoes are closing for good, Jan. I actually posted that on my page the other day. Yeah, that's uh, it's quite uh, the news. You done, Kathy? Done. I don't know if you can see that. It's flour. Happened very quickly. So we're gonna put that in our mixing bowl. No. <gasps> Just messy. Dina wants to know if oat flour is a good substitute for wheat flour and is it possible to make flour from steel cut oats? Yeah, I mean, if you put it in the Vitamix, the Vitamix, the Vitamix will make flour out of anything you put in there. Yeah. So powerful. Um, yeah, I find flowers to be very interchangeable. I know the you know chefy chefs out there who are pastry chefs maybe would differ, but um, yeah, I mix up flowers. I especially like millet flour as well. I just buy millet and I grind it in the hide mix and it just adds a nice little um, crunch. So to the bowl of the flour, I'm gonna add some baking soda, baking powder. You can get both of these sodium free if you want. And that's on my website store if you want to check it out. Um, I've already measured this out. And this is just the general baking powder that I've used. And then this is the salt-free Hain brand that has no sodium added. Guys, I just posted the link to this recipe on the blog because a lot of you are asking for it. So if you don't have the book, I still encourage you to buy it. And Thomas wants to know where's the best place to get your book. You can get it on my website or you can get it on Amazon. So if you're an Amazon lover, it's real easy to go that way. If you, I know some people don't like shopping on Amazon, you can go to my website. It's also available in eBooks at all the various places. So yeah. Um, and if you have the book already and you like it, please consider leaving a review on Amazon because even though the book's been out three years, the more reviews we get, um, the better so all right so here is some cinnamon and nutmeg that i've already pre-measured oh and a little bit of clove i use about an eighth teaspoon of clove someone commented yesterday on my facebook page that that was a little bit too much for them i like it a little spicy but if you don't you can always you can always augment those things a little bit so there's all my dry stuff. You always want to mix it with a fork. I like to use a whisk just so it gets evenly mixed before you add the wet stuff. stuff. Joe says, can the oats be left whole? I leave them whole in my carrot cake. I've never tried it, but probably. Or you can use quick, quicker cooking oats if you don't want the pieces so big. Okay. So there's all of our dry stuff. Now we're gonna go back to our soaking dates here. And we're just gonna put those into the blender very gracefully. Whoa. Oh, Lori got the book for Mother's Day. What a nice Mother's Day present. Nice. There's a question on the salad from Susan. She doesn't have limes. Can she use lemon juice? And uh, Dina wanted to know if you could use bottled. I don't see why not. Yeah, yeah, either one. And, and Fernando wanted to know, do you have to use medjool dates or could you use another date? You can use another date. And with dates and nuts, I always give, give the ounce measurement as well. So the best way, because dates and nuts come in so many different sizes, um, it's best to have, 
a little scale in your kitchen. I use this all the time. Um, so I will tell you the exact measurement. If you don't have a scale, I usually put in parentheses about how much um, by a cup measure, or I'll say about eight dates. So yes, you can use any kind of dates you want. There's another kind of popular date called the Deglet Noir, and they're about half the size of Medjool, and I always give the measurement for that one as well. And I will say, a lot of times people buy dates in the bags pre-hidden. You always want to cut those in half because they miss every 20th one. So just take your knife and cut each one in half. I didn't put the banana in yet, which I'm going to do here in a second, because I wanted to show you, this is a perfect ripeness of the banana that you want. It's kind of got the brown spots on it. And we're just going to use a half of this today. If you had one that wasn't quite this ripe, that's fine too. Some people have also used um, like a quarter cup of applesauce if they didn't have the bananas, but I think the banana is the best. So we're just going to add the banana to the blender, put the lid on, and we're going to blend this until it's nice and smooth. Yeah, Ines says I missed the first half. Apparently, I was I stand corrected. I said you couldn't watch this until it was over. But apparently, if you're on, I guess at least YouTube, you can move the bar and start at the beginning if you want. But then you'll miss what you're missing now. So. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. Heather Goodwin wants to know what is the sweetest date, the one that pays for dinner. <laughs> Oh, you know, I think they're all different. I don't know if one is sweeter than the other, but they sure have different notes. There's one that actually tastes like craft caramels. Uh, uh, I think they're all pretty sweet, but I think my jewels are definitely sweeter than the Deglet Noir. But what I like about the Deglet Noir is because when I'm doing crusts, they are drier. The majules are very, very moist. But for me, probably the majule is the sweetest. Ellen saying, order from date people online in California. Very nice. I, I live in Indio, so we have shields. We have it's like get dates everywhere. You get dates at the gas station here. I'm in the date capital of the world. You know, we actually have something here every year called the date festival. So you should come to that, Heather, and then you could try every variety and decide. Uh, thanks for your nice comment, comment, Anna, about we're both an inspiration. Thanks for sharing recipes, she says. Thanks, you guys, for being here. And yes, please consider sharing. There's a share button on Facebook for sure. Not sure how it works on YouTube. Oh, Eleni says Costco also sells some cold dates. Good to know. All right. So here is the blended dates, milk, vanilla, raisins, what am I missing? Uh, oh, banana. So we're gonna go ahead and add the wet to the dry. And also, if you were to make this at home and you think that's not quite sweet enough or it's a little too sweet, feel free to adjust the dates by one or two. No problem. We're just going to mix this wet and dry together. So all of the dry is incorporated. Once you're at that point, we can grab our last three ingredients, which are grated carrots, some raisins. If you're not a baked raisin person, feel free to leave them out. And then some chopped walnuts. I love walnuts and cakes and cookies, so I always like to add them. But if you don't like them, go ahead and leave them out. Okay. Mike says, do you have any advice on cooking time for cupcake style as mine was still kind of soggy after 40 minutes? Um, when made as cupcakes. Uh, you know, <coughs> baking this way, I find that the cakes and the cupcakes and the breads are going to be heavier because we're not using that refined white flour. We're not using the eggs and the butter and all that kind of stuff. Um, luckily, carrot cake is heavy by nature anyway. Um, one thing that I think might matter, I don't know if it's all in my brain, but when you use a metal pan versus a, a porcelain pan or a ceramic pan or a um, silicone pan, they tend to bake up a little firmer, less moist. So that could be something. Um, if you were using a silicone cupcake, uh, do you guys know what I mean? Let me see if I have one right here. Mm. 
So you would use your metal cupcake pan. This is not the same shape, but this is a silicone pan, which is very flexible. So I find that things that in silicone pans cook up a little wetter, a little moister. So you could try using your metal pan instead. And also for uh, baked goods, this way of cooking, you want to let them cool completely before you cut into them because that moistness in the middle will firm up. And also you want to make sure you are using not really old baking powder and baking soda. If it's too old, it won't rise enough. All right, so our batter is all ready to go here. Now I'm not using a silicone cake pan today for this. I'm using my metal pan. So I do need to line it and we don't use like the old days, we would coat it with butter or oil and then put a little flour. We don't do that. So we're gonna use some parchment paper, which is sold near the aluminum foil, the baking powder, I mean the saran wrap. And then what we do with this, is you pull out a piece that's a little bit bigger than the bottom of the pan because we'd want to account for it going up the sides as well. All right. Okay, so once we have this piece, we're going to fold it. Can you guys see this okay? We're gonna fold this into quarters. Fold it in half, turn it, fold it in half again. So this is the center where everything meets. We're going to just eyeball this to the center of our pan and hold it there with our thumb while we push into the corners and the edges with our fingernail. Enough so that when we remove it, we can see it. Okay, so I don't know, can you see that a little bit? Right there. If you have extra paper hanging off, you can trim it if you like. And then I usually make two cuts right in the corner so it lays a little more nicely and flat. Now when you open it up, you have this beautiful piece and just put it right in your pan. There you go. That's beautiful. Aunt Sandy says, great tip for parchment paper. And that says, what a great lining tip. Gina says, another great tip. A question about the whether dates need to be organic from Dina. How important is it to buy organic versus conventional dates? I don't know where dates fall in like the clean 15 or whatever. I don't think I've seen them on that list. I try to buy everything organic if I can. Um, I don't know. Do you know? AJ? You know, I, I'm pretty sure they're not on the dirty dozen. So, you know, there's a question. If you can substitute, where did it go? It moves so fast. If, uh, zucchini for banana. I don't know, but zucchini's not sweet. Oh, for banana? Instead yeah, of, yes, I thought you were going to say for carrots. Um, I don't know. I mean, you want some kind of moisty. I would substitute with applesauce, like a quarter cup of applesauce instead of zucchini. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. So here's our batter. It's pretty thick. I'm just going to put it right on top of this paper. And if you've never used parchment paper, that might seem weird to put your food on top of paper, but it works really well. And then my hand. Okay, and then just push it into the corners. We want it nice and even on top. You know, but zucchini for carrots, Kathy, zucchini has much higher water content. Than carrots? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know. I have a carrot cake recipe. I mean a um zucchini recipe. So Yep. 
Jamie says, thanks for the parchment paper trick. Never, and Heidi says, never thought to line the sides. Dina says, maybe pear can be used as a sub for banana. I found that there is no sub for banana because yeah. banana is unparalleled in both sweetness and texture that, I don't know, it just nothing tastes, anything that has banana just doesn't taste good to me when you take the banana out. Plant-based Jeannie says, does Kathy and Chef AJ throw out old herbs and spices at six months like Del, Chef Del Struve? No, I never throw them out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I smell them and if they're not as potent, then they're just, I don't think they go bad. They just lose their potency. So you might have to use more, but I don't throw anything out unless it's spoiled. What about you? Do you throw your spices out at six months? No, I'm not on a timeline. I mean, if I go to use it and I rub it between my fingers and it doesn't smell like anything, then I might toss it. If I don't have any newer stuff, then I might just use it. But I go through herbs and spices so quickly. Quickly. You know what? There are some things that I don't use as frequently, herbs and spices. So I have this airtight container that I keep them in. Um, and you just push the top and it comes off. So that's one way that um, I keep my herbs and spices that I don't use as frequently a little fresher. This is an OXO box. Um, okay. So the cake batter is in there. I'm gonna put it in the oven and it's at, set at 350. Lisa says peanut butter dates are delicious. Is that a type of date or are you just putting peanut butter in the date? Peanut butter dates, I've never had that. We don't do peanut butter at True North, so I, I kind of got off the peanut butter bandwagon. Wow. Shane says she found the mustard on the Walmart site. That's great. And Facebook user, sorry when I call her a Facebook user, but that's actually what it says, says uh, needs my daily dose of Chef AJ. Plant-based genie, you said something would be good as frozen ice pops, but I'm not sure what you were referring to because sometimes the comments come after, you know, a few minutes after something is said. So okay. that's the story. That's the story. All right. How long are baking powder and baking soda good for? Deb wants to know. My 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 mentor, who's going to be on the show on May 23rd, who was the pastry chef at M Cafe, and he's the chef for Madonna and now chefs for Toby McGuire's name is Eric Lachesser. He said you need to keep them in the refrigerator. Oh, I hadn't heard that. I don't know how long they keep. I don't know. I'd have to look that up. Um yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I guess I use it enough. I mean, I always use it completely and then I just buy a new one. So I'm no help there, but I am help here. Here is a completed carrot cake. Um, and I took the parchment paper off and it's real easy to do. Maybe I should have left, mm, no. So if the parchment paper was in here and this was done baking, you would just lift it after it's cool, set it on your cutting board, and then you can do this. It's real easy. And then put it back into your pan so you're not having the parchment paper hanging out. Um, or you can take it out of the pan and put it on a nice square plate or a platter or something. But I'm just going to leave mine in here. And la, 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 la. oh, so this has frosting. And in the frosting, and it's totally optional. If you were to eat this carrot cake as a muffin or a piece of cake from here without frosting, it'd be totally delicious. It'd be sweet enough. But if you want to go that extra step, maybe you're having a birthday party or something special and you want frosting. Um, the frosting that I make is called a vanilla frosting. It's got cashews, um, vanilla extract, a little bit of water and dates. That's it. And I already pre-made that. So let me just grab it out of the fridge here. And how long did you bake it for, Michelle wants to know? Oh, uh, between 40, 40 and 45 minutes. So I did about 43. Nice. Yeah. We have a question for Thomas from California Balsamics who's watching live. Betty Lou wants to know, do you need to refrigerate? I've done a few interviews with him on my YouTube page and from what I remember, you don't need to refrigerate. So Thomas, if you see that, maybe you can uh, type the answer. Elspeth says she doesn't throw anything out either. Elspeth is teaching a wonderful cooking class right now, vegan meats daily. How can I make the frosting whiter in color? Caroline wants to know. Use macadamia nuts instead? Uh, 
No, because I use cashews, and those are kind of the same color as macadamia nuts. You could go to the laborsome thing of removing the skins from the dates, which can be done. It's just very tedious. So you would soak them whole, and then you kind of, like you do when you roast be beets, you kind of push the skin off. So after the date's soaked, you can push that skin off. But this is this is the color of mine. Um, the more you blend it, the lighter that it gets. So just keep on blending it. I suppose you could add a, a few, you know, one or two fewer dates. Um, but since the dates and raisins are my main sweetener, it's kind of hard to get away from that color. Okay, looking for the specific knife that I don't see. I don't know where it is. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is just put the frosting and you know this frosting doesn't have butter or lard or oil in it so it's you know like those saturated fats so it's not going to stand up at room temperature in quite the same way that regular frosting is. It has you know a lot of cashews in it which are high in fat but still it's going to be more on the creamy side than the stiff side. So what I'm going to do is just, and I've had it in the fridge. That helps a little bit. I'm just going to pour this right on the cake. You guys, I'm going to be left here by myself with two pure cakes. Well, um, could you freeze one of them? Yeah, although I'm going to try freezing with the frosting, although I think it would be better without the frosting to freeze it. Um, I, I'll give some to my neighbors, I guess, although they might not want to eat them since we're, you know. Yeah, my neighbors are still eating my food. I don't go to their house. I just drop it off when I walk Bailey. So, I mean, because I, I think compared to what they eat, my, my food's going to be way healthier, even, I, even though I touched it, you know, so. Yeah. And we haven't gone anywhere except to the store once a week for the last six weeks. And uh, we, we as, uh, Patrice says, how about vanilla powder to help with the white issue? I find that that makes it worse because vanilla powder is so dark. Mm. And can you substitute tofu for the cashews in the frosting to make it lower in fat? I think so. I think there's enough sweetener in there that that would probably work. So you just want to use a nice stiff tofu. LM wants to know how long it can be in the freezer. Um, baked goods, I don't know, maybe three months. Yep. Up to. And Stell says your cookbook picture shows stand up frosting on the cupcakes. How did you get it to stand up? Uh, I think I used a, a pastry bag, a frosting bag to kind of go like that. And it's, it's no stiffer than what's here. This might also be a little bit just the way the photo was edited, you know, to be a little lighter. But um, yeah, if you want to use a frosting bag, a pastry bag, just put it in there and then maybe put it in the fridge or the freezer before you're going to frost them. So, but believe me, once you start eating this, it, the texture is, you're not even going to think about it because it tastes so good. I'm just using a frosting knife here to spread this around. Oh, so good. Alexandra says, I love this carrot cake recipe. I use it often and made it for my kid's birthday this year. Oh. And Carrie says, until you start live streaming from True North, can Chef AJ have you on every week? That's up to Kathy, guys. I'm happy to offer her a platform if she wants to come on anytime. Oh, that's nice. I know I resisted doing video for so long. It just seems so overwhelming to me, um, but I'm learning. It's the same as teaching in person, except for without the audience. Well, it's not the teaching part. It's the um, tech part that is overwhelming. So right now I'm filming on my video, on my uh, iPhone, but I have a new camera coming in the mail and I'm learning, you know, how it should be hooked up to the, wireless directly and I'm figuring it out. Well, you know who could help you is, is, is the other Kathy, Kathy Hester. She's a pro at how to make things. She does like, I don't know, three camera shoots. She's amazing with that. And I know she'd talk to you because everybody named Kathy is so nice. They're asking what model Vitamix you're expecting. I got the most popular one. Is it the 5200? I don't know. I 
I think that's the one. That's not the one I have now, but I think it's the one that's been around forever. I think it's 5200. Um, the one I have now I bought used from a friend. It's a Vita Prep. So I think it's more the chef's kitchen model or something. Um, but yeah. Ja Jacqueline wants to know if, if you, the nutritional information for your recipes are available. Yes, they are. They're in the cookbook, in the back. I didn't want to make the individual pages too busy, so I didn't put them all on the individual pages. And maybe next time I will do that if people really want it. But what I did, where is it? Is... I put all the nutritional information in a big old chart in the back um, that looks kind of like this. It kind of spans the page, but I really got in depth, you know, calorie density, serving size, um, amount of fat, calories from fat, saturated fat, protein, sugar, fiber, calcium. So it's all in there. It's just in the back of the book. And then on the website, it's also at the bottom of the recipe. Nice. So here is the frosted cake with the frosting. And I'll even cut a piece for you because I know it's fun to watch the chef eat a bite of the own food. And it's my birthday today. So it's your birthday. I didn't even say happy birthday. No wonder you're, oh, guys, let's sing. Well, wait, I, I guess you won't hear it. Well, let's sing anyway. <laughs> sing silently. Oh, my God. I, you know what? I knew it was your birthday, and then I forgot. Well, happy birthday. Oh, my okay. God. Well, of course you have to make cake for your birthday. I Aunt know. Sandy says to, that she's in Colorado, so she has to cook it a little bit uh, longer in higher altitude, and that's just good advice for anybody at higher yeah. altitude. All right, so I'm gonna do it out here. Look. Okay, I got a little messy on the side there. But there's a piece. And you know, sometimes people ask me, can I do a double layer cake with this? And you can, but I did it once and it didn't turn out that great because the cake is a dense cake. So when you put two layers and you put this frosting, it just kind of smashes it because the frosting isn't, um, doesn't have enough body. So what I would say is you could make a cake like this, cut this in half this way, and that might work a little better. It'd be less heavy. So I don't know if you can see in there. Oh, but so many people are typing happy birthday. I'm saying for your presence, share the video so that more people can see you. Yes, thank you. And they're saying if you don't want to do this weekly with me, they're saying at least monthly. So, because I, I know you probably can't see the comments while you're cooking. I can't see any comments. Um, no, and I also have a YouTube channel. It only has one old video on it, but that is my plan to start making videos more regularly, putting them on my YouTube channel. So you can go there and subscribe to it. Um, although there's nothing that much happening at the moment, but this video will be on there. I think the video I have on there from a couple years ago is how to make pie crust. Um, but yeah, I hope to get on the YouTube bandwagon and start doing more of that. Um, so anyway. Dina we, wants to know if you can FedEx her a piece, except I think it'd have to be in dry ice maybe, huh? Because doesn't it have to be kept in the refrigerator or at least when it has frosting? Well, if you're going to eat it that day, probably not. But yeah, overnight. And I would... I would put the frosting on closer to when you're going to serve it um, because it is just a different kind of frosting. And this is a good thing. We don't want frosting that's standing up and stiff because then that means it has butter or lard or um, oil or something in it. So this frosting texture is just so creamy and nice. It's just delightful. So, so yeah, you could keep the frosting separate from the cake, say if you're going to holidays or something, and then just put it together once you get there. That's uh, great. Uh, let's see, somebody, uh, Gone with the Kale, what a nice name, says you're so adorable. Do you want to answer some of the questions that Jan sent in about, you know, your cooking stuff? Sure. So she wants to know, because you showed at the beginning your chef knives, what knives do you use, how you sharpen them, and how you store them? Okay. Let me rinse this off okay. Um, 
it. So I just have a wood cutting block that I store my knives in. It's not that beautiful, but it's just one of these jobbers. And I pretty much use two knives. Um, I could just get away with using one of these, but these are the two I use most often. This is a eight inch chef's knife called a Dragon by Yaxell, Y-A-X-E-L-L. -L. This was recommended to me um, by the guy at the cutlery store as one of his favorite chef's knives. Uh, this one, I don't know how long it is. It's probably seven inches. This, my cat's still trying to get in the closed cat door there. Um, this one's about seven inches and it's a little easier to maneuver. So I use this for more everyday stuff like cutting my apples, um, my bananas, even though it's big. I have a smaller one um, here, but I like this one even better. Uh, okay. Uh, this one I do like to use like if I'm doing those long shreds of cabbage or I'm cutting a big onion. So I do use both of them. And then how do I sharpen them? Let's see. Uh, I've used a sharpening steel. I've had them sharpened at the cutlery store. Uh, they will usually sharpen your knives for free once a year if you buy a knife there. Uh, is this it? This is just a little handheld sharpener that I got. So I use that as well. I had a sharpening stone. No. What do you call that? A sharpening rod? I forget. Um, but I left it at my mom's house. So I just bought this one um, for the time being. But yeah, you got to keep your knives sharp. They say that professional chefs that work in kitchens, they're sharpening their knives every single day. So as soon as you start to see that it's getting unsharp, you want to um, sharpen it up. So I'm not brand loyal, really. I just, these happened into my life and I like them. This one is, is a MAC, M-A-C. I love, love, love this knife. It's just light. It's got these little holes on the side, these little divots, so the onions and stuff, the apples wouldn't stick to them. This is a great knife. So, um, and these are more on the expensive side. This is probably $125. This was given to me as gifts. So I'm not sure, but I think it's around 100. You can get a decent knife for about $40. And the one I used to use, do I have it in here? Is this knife, which is around forty dollars, and it's on my website. It's a Victorinox, and I bought it because America's Test Kitchen said it was the best knife for its price. So this is a good one too. It's really light, eight inch. Jan said, "What are the indentations on that other knife for?" I believe so. The stuff won't stick to them as much, but I'm not sure. Maybe they make them go in cut easier. But you know, when you cut an onion or an apple, and it just Dicks, can't get it off. Um, I think that helps with that. Maybe it's ornamental as well. Nice. Jan also wants to know what cutting board do you use, how you clean it, and do you have a separate one for garlic and onion? So this is the cutting board I used to always use. It's a wood, I like wood cutting boards compared to plastic, but I use both. But at home I use a, a wood one. I just clean it with a sponge with soap and water. Um, and then the, I recently moved to a smaller cutting board, which I like much better because it's easier to take to the sink and back because sometimes I really like to scrub it. So as you can see, it's a little bit smaller than this other one. Um, and what was it? And again, these are just bamboo cutting boards. I like the way that the knife cuts on wood better than plastic. Yeah, if you had a separate one for onion and garlic oh. and how you clean it. Yeah, no, I'm pretty good about washing my cutting boards after I use them, so I haven't found that to be a problem. Sometimes when I'm cutting garlic in particular, I'll make sure to keep it up at the corner, not in the center, just because I know it can leave a, a flavor. Um, but onions, I'll just do right in the middle because you need a lot of space for onions. Uh, some people will write like F on this side for fruit and they'll only do fruit on this side of the cutting board. And then on this side, they'll do everything else. Mm -hmm. If you want to keep your fruit separated. Yeah. 
Aline says the indentation are called dimples and the purpose is to keep food from sti sticking. She learned this when she bought mine. Oh, yeah. So. Brenda says wood helps knives, her knives stay sharper. Plastic dulls them faster. And let's see, you have a question about if, what your food processor is. Um, can't find it, but they asked if you uh, had a full-size food processor or what food processor do you use? Uh, it's a Cuisinart. It is a 14 cup. Let me look. Uh, it's a Cuisinart 14 cup food processor. That's what it says on the front. So I think it's probably their most popular one. It's nothing super special. Um, I like Cuisinart. I've heard the KitchenAid is good. Hamilton Beach is good. I do like, and I suggest to people go ahead and get the big one. Um, sometimes the big ones come with little little cups in them if you want to do a little bit of something, but I just get the 14 cup because I don't want to just have a little one and want to make a whole bunch of hummus or something. So, yeah. Nice. Somebody's saying if you put less liquid in the frosting, would it be stiffer? Yes, it would be stiffer. Um, and what you could do, what do I do with it, is use your tamper in your Vitamix. So the top comes off of the lid. The top comes off of the lid, and then you can put your tamper in there, which I don't know where that is. Um, and then you can help move it around. And then if you need to add a little bit more water, you can just add like a little tablespoon at a time or something. That's nice. Yeah. And then uh, there's a question if in your book, does it talk about your story and why, you, why and when you went plant-based? Yes, it does. It's in the back. It's called My Story, I think. And it uh, gives you a few pages of how I got into this. And yeah, it's all in the book. And it's on the website too. Patricia wants to know if you have a Dutch oven, and if so, what brand and what size? Uh, yeah, I'll show you. You know what? My cat is driving me nuts. Let me open the door here. Well, speaking of cats, Lori Herman says, how many do you have? Oh, hold on. She wants to be in the action. I just didn't want the cats around the cords and the lights and the tripod and stuff. Uh, there she is. I have two kitties. Um, I'll show you their picture because I know you're dying to see it. Hi, Brenda. Okay. Guys, don't forget to come back at one o'clock because Gustavo is going to cook something today. Not sure what, but I know it's going to be good. All the way from Argentina. Argentina. I don't have human children, so I, I give a great placement to my cat's pictures. So this is Bindi. She's two. And beautiful she was the one who's just trying to get in and now she's in the kitchen looking at anything and uh this is leo he's nine wow handsome i know he's so handsome such a good boy so those are my kids and now that she's in the house she's much happier oh she wanted to finish her breakfast okay so now she's eating uh, so, any more questions? Yeah, a couple more. What pans do you use? Oh, pans. Uh, uh, let's see. So I use um, this one when I want to do things that traditionally have oil or butter in the bottom. So pancakes, hash browns, veggie burgers, and what else? Oh, like falafel patties. This is a nonstick pan. It's Ozeri, O-Z-E-R-I. And it's reasonably priced and it's got one of these ceramic coatings. So I got turned onto this from Chef Ramsey's at True North. He uses this to make his um, crepes. So it's a really good pan. It didn't have a lid or maybe I just didn't buy the lid. It didn't come with a lid. So I use that. Um, I have a couple smaller this is my little pasta pot that I use for just tons of things. I love this thing. What brand? So, so you didn't answer though if you have a Dutch oven. The answer is no, right? Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. Um, I do. This is my La Crusade. And 
I love it for making soups and stews. You never use your Instant Pot, do you? Yeah, I do. I use it to make beans. I'll make stew sometimes. I'll make rice and beans together, which you think wouldn't work, but you just set it to the time for the beans rather than the rice. And it turns out fine. The rice is cooked and intact and I don't know how it works that way, but yeah, I have an Instant Pot. And I don't use it that much, but I use it. B BG wants to know if you season the pan. No, I never season anything. I mean, you mean with oil or something. Um, no, and in fact, I disregard that at all times. I know with certain things like, um, what do you call those old tiny pans that you have to season? Cast iron skillets. Yeah, I've heard that you kind of have to season those. Um, and I got a new waffle maker. I like waffles every so often. And a new nonstick waffle maker will always say season the irons before you use it. Don't do that. Just disregard that. There's already a nonstick coating. I just got this, but I got to put it on my store, Proctor Silex. Um, but I made waffles with it for the first time recently. And they lift, it's the most nonstick, nonstick I've ever used in my life. There was absolutely no resistance. It just came right up. And my batter doesn't have any oil in it, so. And Jan wants to know if you use oven mitts or you take things out of the oven with towels. Oh no, I use oven mitts. I have these two, um, they're kind of old. I need to get a, a pair of the silicone ones because maybe those would work better. But I just use these guys so much. Um, yeah, so nothing too special. Um, Very cool. Yeah. You guys are asking what time zone is Gustavo going to be cooking at? It's always going to be Pacific because that's where I live and it's at 1 p.m. today. So that's very cool. Let's see, I'm just scrolling because this where I see the questions. Uh, Leslie wants to see a kitty sandwich. Like, does that mean between bread or between, or with Kathy is the... <laughs> kitty sandwich. Funny. Well, the kitties are gone now, but... Um... My they little kind to be let in. Yeah, the, the, as long as you let them in, they won't hang, you know, they just wanted to be let in. Uh, Patricia wants to know, do you know what size your Dutch oven is? Um, it has a 26 on it. I don't know, it just says 26. Yeah, Look. she's saying hold up your cats together, but I don't, I don't think they want to be on the show. <laughs> From what I know well, about cats. One of them's yeah. in the garage sleeping and then the other one doesn't have to be held, so. Great. All right. So here we have time for one more question. Janet wants to know, what is your process when you create new recipes? Oh, good question. So when I get an idea for a recipe, I usually look through some of the books. I have a lot of cookbooks. So I look through those, both traditional and vegan, plant-based, just to see where the um, themes are. Um, so what things can I leave in? that are good for us, that are healthy whole foods, what things need to come out because they're salt, oil, sugar, meat, dairy, eggs, etc. And then how can I substitute those things or do I even need to substitute those things? Sometimes I don't. So I do look at a handful of other recipes just to remind myself like, oh yeah, carrot cake has ground clove in it. You know, you just don't wanna forget. So my goal is to try to, Take a traditional recipe like carrot cake, give it a health promoting makeover as much as possible. And um, yeah, so I want to, I don't want to recreate the wheel. I just want to tweak it so it's better for us. But I do look at other recipes. Um, I have different versions. I keep notes, you know, of what ver the version that I'm working on. And when I create a recipe, I usually make it four to five times just to really dial it in. and get it perfect so that I'm excited. If I make it a couple times and I'm like, ooh, this is good, then I know I'm onto something. Sometimes I have to give up something that I've been working on. It just isn't happening. I think I tried making lemon bars once and it was the same thing with the dates. They turned out to be brown and it just didn't look appealing. It probably still tastes good, but it's gotta look 
It's gonna look good too. So that one I put on the back burner for now. Um, Lori says, can you recommend affordable nonstick pans? Well, that one I showed you, that skillet, Ozeri, O-Z-E-R-I, they're pretty affordable. Um, I know a lot of people like green pan, and I think they're on the more affordable end. I bought a green pan ages ago, and I put it up too high on the heat, and it ruined the bottom, and I just haven't bought green pans since. So um, you got to take care of your nonstick pans. There's an article on my website about nonstick pans, and I address the questions that people have. And the bottom line, it seems, with nonstick, based on my research, is you have to treat them well. If you abuse them in some way, you overheat them, you scratch them, you whatever, then it compromises them. And even if you treat them well, they still should be replaced every three to five years, I think is what I read. Um, so you don't need to be afraid of nonstick pans. The technology's come a long way. You just need to take care of them and use them wisely. Mainly, you don't want to turn them up as high as you would a normal pot or pan. Right. VG wants to know what waffle iron you have, and I just posted a link to the one that I have in case she wants to know that. It's a Proctor Silex, and it's really inexpensive. Let me see if it has a model number on it. Um, 26070. That's all I can say. Great. But it, it looks like that. Colleen is saying Costco has a fantastic set for about 150. I think she's talking about pans. Plant-based Genie says can you use apricots instead of dates. I don't think they taste as sweet. And they, they have two dates are a very neutral flavor. Apricot is a very specific flavor. And dates are just so sweet. I know. Nothing else really comes close to them. If you're a person who knows you don't like a really sweet, you know, cookie or cake or whatever. You can, you can try apricots or just raisins or applesauce or some bananas or some other kind of fruit, but dates are such a good replacement for, you know, white sugar, brown sugar. Um, they're just so sweet, yeah. which is why we got to be careful with them, not that you know, we're just eating lots of them straight. Well, our, our friend Kenny Malcolm, the former cameraman of Weight Loss Wednesday is here and wishes you a happy birthday. And we really appreciate you working on your birthday to show us these amazing recipes. Thank you so much. I had a blast. Yeah, well, you're welcome to come back. You have an open invitation. Just let me know. Guys, check out straightupfood.com if you want these recipes. I've been posting the link. Or even better, why not get this wonderful book on Kathy's website or Amazon? It lays flat, which is really, really cool. And it has beautiful pictures. And thank you guys so much for watching. Please come back in about 90 minutes for another cooking demo all the way from Argentina with Gustavo Tolosa. It's great seeing you, Kathy. And happy birthday and many, many more. More. Thank you so much. Okay. Right. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.